Welcome to another surprise edition of our Riftwing Designs for Zen Yoga. I am happy to see you all here and let me back up a little. Today we are doing Star versus the Forces of Evil and I am Glossaric. So we're going to be doing some sage yoga on the wall for this. Today you will need to have a wall with no obstructions. <laughs> so if you don't already have that, find yourself a nice place where there's no paintings. Obviously you see I can, I've removed a couple that were there. I've put my mat up next to the wall. And you may also want to have a blanket or a towel to cushion because we are going to be doing a lot of stuff on the wall and the floor, which can be a little tough. So get yourself settled in <laughs> and we're going to get started here. So get my angles right. That should be pretty good. And that all looks fantastic. So to start off with today, we're going to be starting on the wall with our backs to the wall. So it'll be flat back against the wall. Maybe scoot your tailbone in. Again, if you'd like, you can have a pillow behind you or you can have a blanket underneath you. Find ease wherever you are. And first come to your breath. Just notice how your breathing is today. So today's yoga will be star versus the forces of evil or the star versus the wall. And if you haven't seen it yet, star versus the forces of evil is an American animated magical girl television series following the adventures of star butterfly, a reckless princess from the dimension of Muni who is sent to earth to mellow out because she is a rebel princess that does punky things and creepy spells and is just so different than the traditional magical girl, which makes it really refreshing. There she befriends human Marco Diaz and lives with him as an exchange student. And the two travel to exotic dimensions using these interdimensional scissors. And they are trying to prevent the forces of evil from Muni from stealing first star's magic wand. Now, that's where Glossaric comes in. Gl Sir Glossaric of Terms is the embodiment of this princess's magical book. And she is, the book is for her wand and the magical spells within. Therefore, I am a star's guide in magical matters. And also he tends to do a lot of yogic poses and stoicism. He is one of those uh, stereotypical wise gurus that speaks in riddles. He can also be very silly and playful. And he can also talk around things and be cryptic, like Globgor, for an entire season. And he can also be kind of sarcastic, and he loves pudding. So if you need to bribe me today, pudding is the bribe. So when we think about the show, and especially Sir Glossaric, the most famous quote from Muberty episode is that nature is like a runaway dump truck. Hot! fast and full of garbage and as we know 2020 has been that dump truck full of garbage probably on fire we've only got a couple more weeks left of this year and this is the last workshop we're doing together using aids in yoga so i really wanted to just kind of tie everything together with a bow and say goodbye 2020 thank you for what we've done uh, one of my achievements is that i have learned to stream and i have been certified in yoga so thanks to all of you for your continued support here but as we think about this runaway dump truck hot fast and full of garbage let's use that as today's focus we may be in a trash heap now but doing things like yoga, being here with me on the mat, and finding your center can help you to find your way out of the garbage. You may be smelly, but that's what self-care and spa days are for. So continue to take care of yourself. So think about what you want as your intention today. Start to feel the grounding of your shoulders and back and the grounding of your feet. So you have two planes that are connecting to the earth. And if you'd like, you can use grounding as your intention. You can use the intention of climbing on top of the pile of garbage as a champion. 
Or maybe you just want to call for Zen or peace. Or if there's any resolution that you have left for this year that you think you can achieve, maybe that'll be your goal. Wherever you are, start to draw your breath in evenly. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. In and out. Perhaps finding your own rhythm, whether it's faster or slower. Imagine each exhale releasing all of that garbage. And with each inhale, drawing in fresh air and hope for the future. Out with the garbage and in with hope and refreshing peace. Take a few more breaths, focusing on your intention. And now gently flutter your eyes open. We're going to do a butterfly, here we go, on the wall. <laughs> and for that, we're going to inhale, tracing the backs of your arms, feeling your shoulder blades and your arms on the wall here. And we're going to do one more exhaling down, really feeling the press into the wall. So these are called uh, wall butterflies, which is perfect for star verses, or wall angels. I'm doing a few more just because it feels really good. Just go really slowly, intentionally feeling it here. And then when you come back to the top, keep your arms up, pull those shoulder blades down and really feel the tension, the way that this makes your back go into posture. You have the back of your head touching, the back of your shoulders, your back maybe. Maybe the small of your back is no longer touching here. Again, just do what's right for you, no pain, but just focus on it here. And then draw your hands together into that normal prayer and take it in front of you. Feel the release as your shoulders let go, drawing hands to heart center. And we're going to start our practice by again thinking of our intention. One breath to center. And then a deep inhale. Exhale, let it all go. Sealing our practice for today. And now if it's comfortable for you, we can do some of our stretches against the wall, but you may want to scooch up here because we're going to do our normal warm ups. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist to one side. So now you've got one arm pressing against the wall. And you're stretching here and looking over, but keep this arm. Maybe it feels better to have the opposite arm back this time. Maybe you don't want to do the full twist. Feel what feels right for you using the wall as grounding. Twisting from the spine, maybe modify where your tailbone is and see if that releases your back because this can be very intense on your back. And then inhale up, exhale other side. Again, noticing how your body feels with that extra tension on the wall, pressing the wall side arm in, and then maybe find out what your chest and back need to do Adjusting your position to find what's comfortable and right for you. Inhale up, and one more time, other side. Again, experiment here. Maybe this time don't press so much against the wall. I'm leaning over a little bit. Maybe we could try a little side open. There's no wrong way to do Designs for Zen Yoga, as long as there's pain. Uh, no pain, oh my gosh, what am I saying? Glossark does speak in riddles, that's for sure. And then twist other side, maybe coming in and just playing around with it. Just keep those sit bones grounded. And notice where your gaze is. Maybe it feels better to look down or up. Then inhale back up. Exhale, forward fold. And again, if you need to adjust your legs, feel free, but just walk your hands in front of you. Mm, bend into it. 
and breathe. And from here, you can come into your normal cat-cow or you can do seated cat-cow. It's going to be difficult to do against the wall, so I'm just going to bend and go into my cat-cows here. And I'm just going to turn so you can see it again. So you're exhaling into cat. Inhaling into cow. Breathing, exhaling as you arch your back. Inhale. Using your shoulders and your chest to guide you. So you're going up and pushing back. Inhaling, shining your chest through. And go at your own pace here. Maybe welcoming some gentle movement into your tailbone. Doing what feels right for you today to start to warm up your spine after sitting against that wall for so long. Any movements that you need today, go right ahead and do. I'm doing some circles here with my hips. And because I like to do these to warm up, I'm going to go into a little sphinx or a seal here just to lighten up my back. All right. We're going to come into a seated twist. So this can be done against the wall or not. All of these have options not against the wall. So first, you're going to sit back and then turn. And what happens is we're going to do staff first. I think that's easier. So I'm sitting against the wall with my legs out, chest in. My arms are very close to the wall here. Then you cross the leg that's closest to the wall over so it's facing away from the wall. So the one that was close to the wall comes over. And then you twist into the wall. So you can use the wall here. I'm grabbing with my back leg, or back arm, and maybe look towards the arm. You can even press with this arm if you want. Find how you can, it looks like I'm hugging the wall here, and get the twist from your leg and back. Breathing. Maybe it feels better to bend this arm to a 90 degree angle. Experiment. Have fun with this. Maybe roll your head around and see how that feels. We didn't really do neck warm-ups. If you need it, go right ahead. And then we're going to gently, gently on one, noticing how different the body feels doing these warm-ups against the wall. And then turn around. Coming into staff pose. Taking the leg that's on the wall side across. And then twisting into the wall. Again, finding where your arms need to be. Breathing. Notice how it gives you a little torque. Maybe you're needing a little more. Maybe you back off just a little. Remember in yoga, finding your edge means noticing where the pain might just start and then backing off a little bit. Not going to your 100%. Going to enough to challenge you, but not to hurt. And then again, slowly unwind. Notice how that feels. We're going to do child's pose now, so you can do normal child's pose, or I'm going to show you child's pose against the wall. And I'm going to use my blanket here because I do have sensitive knees. So you put your blanket out. Oh, I need to go this way. Put your blanket out. <laughs> And you come into your normal child's pose, so you're about two feet away from the wall. Knees are out, feet are in like normal child's pose. And instead of going down all the way, you plant your hands on the wall and then fold your chest down. You can scooch further back if you need to. Because there should be no pain in your shoulders and you want to keep your tailbone down. Let your chest and, and neck melt into it. Maybe nodding yes and no. And if this doesn't feel good, you can always go lower on the wall, bend your arms more, or just do a normal child's pose. Again, no pain. Find what works.
works for you. And then start to come back up. So that's a child's pose on the wall. You can use that as a resting. And again, if you don't want to use the wall, don't. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is a couple of standing poses. And I do have my cheat sheet here. We're going to go through a flow. Let me make sure my height's okay. We're going to go through a flow using similar to a sun salutation. Except standing. So this is great accessibility for people that can't necessarily do all of those motions. Or that it is not, why am I not facing you guys? That's not good for you. So here we go. Let me make sure my magical charm is facing the right way. All right, so start off in your mountain pose, Tadasana, rolling shoulders back and down, feet hip distance apart. Just breathe. If you're with me in my other workshops, the first one we're going to do is similar to our massage or ball yoga. So you're taking your mountain pose next to the wall and putting one arm behind you. Might be better this way. Yeah. One arm behind you. And then you kind of scooch closer to the wall. So you're feeling a massive stretch here behind you. It's kind of fun doing it this way. It's a totally different angle for me. And for you, obviously. There you go. Breathe into it. Keep your feet nice and neutral. Don't lock your knees. Your gaze can be forward. Or maybe you try and twist your neck a little bit and get a little neck twist in here. Again, find what works for you. And again, option if you need to, you can bend your arm. That lightens the stress on your joint and your shoulder. Keep breathing. And then we're just going to roll across the wall and go on the other side. There we go. Keeping your feet nice and balanced, centered. Maybe pressing your arm in. Maybe bending that back elbow if you need it. Maybe looking over your shoulder. It looks like I'm doing the limbo here, but I promise you, I'm trying to keep good posture. That way you can't see the back of my arm, but that's, that's what I'm doing. All right, and then come out. Maybe here you need to do a little shimmy shimmy. Get those arms nice and loose after that big stretch, maybe even like a baseball stretch or a hug. Why not? Let's do a hug. Forward fold hug. And bend those knees. Just get nice and loose. Let the head go. And then inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then inhale all the way back up. Coming back into mountain. And now we're going to do our salutations. So, to do these again, First, we're going to start off by facing the wall in our mountain pose. I love this angle. And then we're going to inhale, hands up. Going into reach our hands together, maybe looking up. And then we're going to do a dog. So instead of doing a normal down dog, we're going to go to the wall and place our hands in front of us. So you can go into three options here. You can do just one where you're standing with your arms here, or you can step back and start to go into an L shape by lowering your chest and pushing your tailbone out. Maybe walk your hands down. See how I'm getting into this nice fold here? Now you can bend your knees just like you do in a down dog. You can step a little further back. I know you can't see this, but I'm actually lifting up my toes here. Let me show you. This is a very interactive panel, isn't it? So we've got our hands about center of the wall, stepping back. Oh my gosh, you still can't see me. What if I go this way? Yeah, there we go. Okay. See how I'm lifting the heels and pedaling my feet here? And again, you can walk your hands further down. You can walk your feet 
closer or further away to find where that bend works for you. Then the other option is to do more of a standing dog where your arms are higher up and you make your legs wider than normal and then you just melt your chest in. So it looks like I'm getting frisked by the police. <laughs> but you have wide legs and then you're just leaning into the wall. <laughs> this is the worst video, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is wall yoga. So we're in our down dog, whichever dog we're in. And then we're going to go into lunge. So you're going to take your... We'll just do our right foot first. Step in and do a lunge with your arms up. So you're thinking like warrior one or a, a high lunge or a crescent lunge. Your back heel should be lifted. And then you should also be able to really feel that stretch just like you do in a normal lunge. See if you need your legs wider, closer to the wall, hands up, hands down, find your lunge. And then like you're going back into plank, now we're going to step back. And then walk your hands down and come into standing so your fingertips are just near the wall. I'm going to be doing this all day. <laughs> there we go. So think about just brushing the edge. There we go. Shoulders back and down. Feet like you're in mountain. Just reaching here. Then you're going to be doing our push-up part. So you're going to plant your palms down keeping the elbows in like you're doing chaturanga, lean into the wall. Maybe even get to your forearms here. And then we're going to be doing like your normal chaturanga. And then push up. And you're going to go back to your down dog. It seems more difficult than it is. So that was half of a sun salutation. Then next, we're going to do our other side. So just like you do normally, like you can lift your leg up, bring it in, go into your standing lunge here. Find where your hands want to be. High lunge. And then push back, maybe coming down, reach forward. Plant your hands, go into your push-up. Maybe get a little closer and look up like you're doing a chaturanga and then an up dog. And then push back, coming into your down dog. Finding the dog that works for you. All right, so we've done one cycle, how are we feeling? What we're gonna do now is one more cycle. So grab what you need and we'll do it a little faster. So Tadasana Mountain, inhale up. And then exhale down. Inhale up. This time planting your hands, coming into your first dog. Stepping back, hands down, Finding where you can let your chest fold in, or remember that L shape. And then find your way with your lunge, so you're stepping. I'm kicking back with my right and then stepping forward into lunge. This time I have my hands in front of me, and instead of up high, that actually feels fantastic. Because then I can push with my hands. Again, experiment, have fun. And then we're going to step back. Straighten up so your fingers are just brushing. Then push in, going into your chaturanga. Maybe stepping closer for your up dog. 
leaning your belly in, looking up, and then find your dog wherever your dog wants to be. Now we're doing the other side, so kick the left foot back, step it through, lunge. If you're with me, when your hands are in front of you, keep the shoulder blades down. Don't lock your knees. And then step back, get your fingertips, they're just brushing the wall. Then push in your chaturanga, elbows in, then get a little closer to the wall, look back for your up dog and find your down dog. <sighs> nice work. How's our time doing? All right, we should probably stop there, but obviously you could do a whole bunch of these if you want. I'm not really into flows, but I thought it would be really cool for you all to learn how to do a standing variation of our normal salutation. So with that being said, we've done our salutations. There are tons of options for other ways to do dogs, and we're not gonna get into that now, but I'll show you really quickly. So if you do a normal down dog and you can get onto the floor, so that one is for people that really shouldn't be doing inversions, you can put your heels on the back of the wall here and that can hold you in place. How cool is that? Then there's things like lifting up your feet and doing all kinds of fancy stuff, which we're not going to do, but again, these are options to play around with. It's also a great way to get into handstand. But from here, if you're doing it with me and you've got your down dog, your heels in, we're going to all meet in forward fold no matter how you get there. So I'm walking my hands back, planting my heels, <laughs> and your bum is going to find the wall. So we're going into forward fold, the sits bones that should be hugging here. Let your head go. Keep your knees a little bent. So this is a grounded <laughs> on the wall forward fold. <sighs> You can stay here or do a seated fold or find any other option you want, such as that child's pose we did or a dog. Or I'm gonna show you this thing called melting heart, which is super cool. It's the last arm opener we're gonna do. So for melting heart, we're going to face the wall. So your hands are together and you put them like this on the wall. I'll do it here. And then using your hands together with the support, you let your chest fall through and find out where your legs want to be. You don't want to hang too far, but you want to be at an angle where you can hold it for a couple of minutes. Make sure I got everything else. Yeah, walk your feet back and lower your chest. So you're creating an L shape like we did with our dog, but this time our hands are together like this. This might be too much for your shoulders, and if it is, find another variation. Like this is right on the edge for me, so I'm gonna back off a little bit. Walk my feet a little closer and do it where it's not on my edge. And we're gonna hold this here for just a minute. Focus on your breathing wherever you are, whatever pose you've chosen. And if you're with me, this is melting heart. Maybe think about your intention. Six more breaths here. And wherever you are, find your way out. If you looked at me, you may have noticed that was too much for my shoulders, so I stopped doing it. We're gonna do one balance pose here. We could do tons of balance poses here. The wall is one of the best things that can hold you up when you're doing all kinds of really fun stuff. You can do triangle, warrior three, crescent lunge, 
uh, crescent lunge, crescent moon, uh, you can do like all kinds of balances, but we're going to start with tree because that's always a good one. So if you remember tree, come to your mountain pose, roll all those shoulders back and down. Now for tree, what you do is you lift up one foot and then you balance on the other. So on the side that you're not lifting, so I'm starting by standing on my left foot and I'm going to start to lift my right foot. That way I have this side to grab onto. So just gently lift your foot. And when you do tree, you have the option of kickstanding your foot on the other ankle, resting in the lower leg, never, never rest on the knee, or you can rest on the upper leg. Wherever you are, don't lock the standing knee. And this is great training using the wall to help you with your balance. Because then you know not to lock and you won't lose it. If you lock, balance is much easier. It's also very unhealthy for your knee. Again, you can try to move away from the wall. You can find places for your arms in prayer, in tree, in magical yogi pose. Just gonna adjust this a little bit. Wherever you are, find your tree. Maybe change where your arms are. Find your way back down, shake out the standing leg. And now the other side. So again, maybe you have to turn, maybe you're good where you are. I'm now planting my right foot and starting to lift my left, making sure I'm ready for the balance. Again, kickstand, lower leg or upper leg, whatever works for you. You're not competing against me, you're competing against yourself. And then find your balance, maybe using the wall, maybe trying a different hand pose. Remember not to lock that knee. And now maybe find a different place for your hands. Ooh, I'm leaning into the wall. Okay, great. Again, lower your leg, shake it out. And we're gonna try one more. So if you have something you'd like to try, go ahead. I'm gonna take us through warrior three. So for warrior three, it's normally you are going to put your hands together, put your shift into one foot, put your shift, put your weight into one foot, and then you're flying forward and lifting up so it'll look like, let me do it here. It'll look like this. But if you don't have that balance, instead of trying to fly, use the wall, maybe step forward, find the wall. Maybe try it again, a little further out until you can fly without the wall. This is how a lot of people practice handstands. So see how I've got my foot down you want your torso and your hips all to be in a straight line. So your torso should be facing down here. Knee should not be locked. And if you're flying, you can keep that foot flexed. And wherever you are, find your way back down. Shake it out and we're going to try the other leg. So start a little closer. Hands at prayer. Step back and use the wall just to feel how you would bend forward. See how my knee is totally bent here? But I'm just feeling that position that I would be in warrior three. Then step out a little, work on the balance until you find what works for you. Keeping that standing knee bent. And then maybe you try and fly. Knowing the wall is behind you if you need to lean back into it just like a trust fall. 
Again, be safe. And then find your way down. Nice work. So yeah, for handstands and stuff, you'll flip. The wall will keep you from going over and tumbling. But definitely have pillows and safety precautions if you want to try that. We're not doing handstands or headstands or any of that here. But I'm glad to do advanced workshops if you'd like me to come and do that with you. And message me if you want anything specific. Whew, okay, this is drink break. <laughs> this is drink break. Nice work, everybody. Okay, and here we are. We've done our balance poses. That was our peak. We're going to start cooling down. There are so many cool things that we can do. Literally, <laughs> they are cool. So let me show you one more that I have to show you, just have to show you. And it's called King Arthur Pose, which apparently is only done against the wall. So you will probably want padding. So get your padding. And it's like the night of the round table. It's really cool. So first we're going to do it normal. It's like camel where you're on your knees and then you bring your foot forward and then you're looking like a knight ready to be knighted, right? I love it with the costume too. Mm -hmm. Very medieval. So what we're going to do in King Arthur pose is you're going to scooch against the wall and one foot's gonna go up the wall. So this may or may not be available to you. Notice how my knee's bent, my leg is against the wall, and my foot, the top of the foot's touching the wall. Then, with balance, you bring the knee up and go into your King Arthur pose. You may need to use blocks here. Look at how I'm scooching my leg out to get a wider stance. King Arthur pose. Knee should not go past the feet. There should be no pain. Option, if you wanna enhance the stretch, to lean back and try and get your back against the wall. Intense stretch on this leg for me. Is it too intense? Almost, again, look, look for your edge. And then finally, if you want, you can take your arms up above. And let me see, there's one more. Press the backs of your hands into the wall. That's the full expression of the pose. And that is just a little intense for me, so I'm gonna do normal King Arthur. And then in whatever way is safe for you, find your way back down. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna do windshield wipers here with my legs and just woof, shake them out a little. And we're gonna do the other side because you have to find balance in yoga. So find your kneeling. Maybe try our normal kneel first. Other side, you'll notice a difference now. And then take that other foot, pushing the legs. So I've been all fours here, pushing that leg against the wall. And then walking up, lifting, really tucking my knee in as I get into that full expression. Ooh, losing my balance of King Arthur on the other side. An option here if you need blocks or a table or anything else. And then maybe try leaning back. I'm gonna be here for a minute, so find whichever expression helps you to get a full stretch. And it may be different on the other side. This is all right for me. I actually feel it more in my lower back. It's the joy of yoga is learning your own body. Another six breaths. And wherever you are, find your way back down. Congratulate yourself on trying something new. That was really fun and I love it. Okay, so now we're going to do our legs up the wall options. Um, we're going to first show you pigeon because that's something that comes from down dog. We've learned pigeon and figure four in previous designs for Zen. 
pigeon. Actually, I'm going to keep the pad for this. So the full expression of pigeon, well, there's multiple ones. There's a million expressions of pigeon. But for one of them, you, I'm just demonstrating, so just watch here. So you drag your knee up to your wrists. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> this angle is killing me, guys. So your ankle is by your wrists. If you can, your foot can be at an angle like this. Mine can't, so I keep it in. And then the back leg extends out, and you go like this. So we're going to do that against the wall, or if it's not available, we're going to do laying figure four. So if you want to experiment with the standing one first, feel free. Start in your down dog facing the wall. <laughs> it's, there's so many cool options. So your down dog's here. You're bringing your foot in like you're going into pigeon. I'm about a foot away from the wall. See how I'm extending the leg? This one's bent. And then instead of folding normally, you put your hands on the wall and then melt your chest in. And if your forehead touches the wall, that's fine. This might be intense. If you need to, you can put a block underneath. Remember our block workshop. If you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube. And if this isn't available, the option is to lay on your back and do the figure four crossing the leg over. And then you can bend this upper leg and make your number four. See? Wherever you are, we're going to spend just another 20 seconds here. And then unwind and find your way back to your child's pose or your down dog for a quick rest. Reset. And then opposite leg comes up and through, folding into your figure four, or if you're on your back, opposite leg up, threading it in. Wherever you are, finding comfort and ease and not pain. And if you're with me, hands come up. Melting your chest and head forward. <laughs> my gem on my forehead just hit the wall and it clinked. I wonder if Glossaric had to deal with that. Wherever you are breathing, not finding any pain. Finding options as you need them. Breathing. Two more breaths. And start to unwind. That was fantastic work. Now we're going to go into our cool down, starting with legs up the wall. So again, if you need that pad, go right ahead. Get your cushion in scooching up to the wall and then rotating your bum and again if you don't want to do it on the wall you can put your legs on a chair here wherever you are straightening your legs and maybe scooching up again you want your hips pretty close pretty close and your arms can be wherever it's comfortable for you they can be out like a t Palms up or palms down. They can be behind you. I'm making a diamond with my arms. Or they can be on your belly. Whatever works for you. Your feet can be flexed if you want to be active here. Or you can let them be loose. You can also plant your feet and bend your knees if that's more comfortable. Wherever you are, we're going to be here for two minutes. So find what's comfortable for you. Focus on your breathing and maybe come back to your intention here. Starting to cool down. After these very different stretches. You have them in your practice now. Thank you. 
trying I'll spend one more minute here. more breaths. I may be deep in your breaths here. I notice how we're starting to cool and calm down. The next option is to enhance with a wide leg up the wall. Now remember, you're not on video, so if this is okay for you, go right ahead. If it makes you feel uncomfortable or vulnerable in any way, even without anyone watching, don't do it. You could find another option here, such as going into child's pose, keeping your legs up the wall, maybe just sitting and meditating. But if you're with me, begin to widen your legs here. As wide as is comfortable for you, I just had my hip pop. <laughs> so whatever, no pain. And you're going to notice as you get into this V that your legs will start to splay open. They're going to externally rotate. That's fine. Find what's comfortable for you. Maybe you bend your knees. That helps to release a little tension. And as you're here, we're going to be here for another two minutes. You're going to notice that your legs, the muscles will start to relax and you'll open more. That's fine too. So find where your arms need to be in this position. Start to breathe and just notice, and if there's any pain, back off. You want to relax into it and find ease. And if you are not, find it elsewhere. And we'll all come back in a couple minutes. You know, six more breaths. If you notice, I'm doing a dragonfly now with one leg bent and the other extended. And then I'll switch sides. This actually allows me to open more, but also get a nice stretch. There are so many options. For the next few breaths, just find the last option that you would like in this pose. And again, if you really like this, you can stay in this pose. If you're with me, maybe you need to wiggle your legs or knees, but we're going to come into butterfly. You can do seated butterfly, or we're going to do up the wall butterfly together here. So you're taking your feet together and you're opening your knees up into that normal butterfly position. If this feels good to you, notice if you bring your heels in, it's going to open up more. 
And if you keep them together higher up, it's going to have less of a stretch. So find the height that works for you. And I would like to make a diamond here with my arms as well. If this again is not available, you can do this laying down. Just make your arms and legs into a diamond. We'll be here for two more minutes. And six more breaths. Finding any adjustments if you need. Maybe roll your head from side to side, shaking it yes and no. Just noticing how your neck feels here. After all these poses. And again, you can stay here or you're with me. We're going to do some side twists quickly. So take your knees together here. Maybe give them a little hug, just like you would normally as we finish our cool down. And if you have to scooch back, scooch back. There's no rules as long as there's no pain. So from here, we're going to do our normal twist to the side by lowering our legs. And again, you may need to adjust how close you are. And you're going to let your legs fall to the side. And I'm gonna keep my feet planted against the wall here. So I have my knees bent, feet touching the wall, arms in a T, maybe looking the opposite way. Option here, if you'd like, you can straighten your legs. Wherever you are breathing. As you're ready, you're going to come back up, maybe hugging your knees in again. Before allowing them to fall to the other side, again with the option of keeping them bent and feet planted on the wall, or straighten the legs out for a different twist. Breathing here. Maybe looking the opposite way to give your neck that nice last stretch. Notice the grounding in your feet and on your back, same as it was at the beginning. And breathe. wherever you are find your way back and maybe give yourself a hug again what we're going to do is one last movement because normally when we cool down here at designs for zen we like to do those twists and then a bridge <laughs> my necklace has somehow kidnapped me okay there we go 
It's a problem with jewelry and yoga, right? So we're going to do wheel or bridge. So for wheel, let's do bridge first. If you just want to do bridge, you're facing the wall and your feet can be pressing against the wall and you lay down here and you can just lift your hips here. Or if you want, you can actually put your feet on the wall and then lift your hips and it'll give you a different stretch. But for wheel, if it's in your practice, again, if you've never done this, don't do this one. <laughs> or maybe do, I don't know. Again, just do what feels right. I need to rotate my pad because my bum is on the wood. You start with your feet out, just like you would in a bridge. Your palms come up and plant behind your shoulders so your elbows are up. Fingers are pointing towards your toes, but you're twisted here. And what normally happens as a bridge then is you plant your feet in your hands really tightly, pressing through your shoulders. And when you lift, notice my elbows are pressing against the wall here. Then you can lower the elbows down to your forearms and get a deeper stretch. <laughs> and I've seen pictures of people with their chests against the wall. I guess you walk your feet in. I am not an expert on this, so again, only do what's comfortable for you. But it keeps you from slipping or sliding. And then wherever you are, when you lower, make sure your chin is tucked. You could hurt your neck here. Okay, wherever you were in that inversion, nice work. And do any last stretches. Whew, and we're going to go into Savasana. So find your final resting pose. This time we're going to turn our mats 90 degrees. And your feet are going to be touching the wall. So we're grounding again. Your feet can be closer together or they can be a little wide. But keep those feet fully planted on the wall, pressing in. And then relax. Arms open. Maybe your feet splay out a little, that's fine. Don't be active here, relax, but just keep the feet on the wall. Close your eyes and begin to settle into your final absorption of all the energy from this practice. Focus on your breathing, a natural pace. And if any thoughts come by, let them be acknowledged and then send them on their way. They'll be there at the end of this practice. And I'll give you two minutes of silence. And I'll call you back out when we're ready to finish up. And wherever you are, if you'd like to stay here, you're welcome to. And if you're with me, begin to bring gentle movement into your fingers and toes. Maybe rolling your wrists and ankles. 
Take a deep breath in and go into a big body stretch. Maybe scooching back here or maybe pressing into the wall with your feet. And then roll to one side, staying in the fetal pose for just a moment. When Star was first sent to Earth, she said, I didn't get a choice about coming here and you didn't get a choice about having to deal with me. Star, Marco, and the gang all did what they had to. And that's something we need to keep in mind as we continue to survive this pandemic. Again, climbing through the garbage. Star said to Marco, you are awesome. We don't need to get caught up in who saves who. All that matters is that we have each other. Come to a seated position, rolling up, maybe keeping your eyes closed or inviting a gentle gaze. Maybe you're sitting against the wall for one final moment. Noticing how different it feels after all that grounding. Come back to your intention. Decide if there's anything else you'd like to set for the rest of your day. And with me, we're going to inhale, arms up, doing one last butterfly. Hands together, bring them to heart center, exhaling. To finish our practice, we'll do two breaths. First, breathe in. Let it go. And then a deep one to seal our practice. Inhale. And exhale, let it all go. And then draw your hands to your forehead. My gem, the center of your knowledge and intuition. And the light and love and friends in me honors the light and love and friend in all of you. Thank you for practicing with me. And namaste. Again, I appreciate you all experimenting today with this really interesting and different kind of yoga against the wall. And if you enjoyed it, again, check out my other videos here on Twitch or on YouTube. This is it for our AIDS yoga sessions. And the next two will be themed. So next week is leg week. We're doing Deku, My Hero Academia shoot style yoga. And then after Christmas, we are going to do a Saturday yoga on Spirited Away with my favorite moves. Going into the new year, one of my resolutions is that I'm gonna be cutting back. I'll be posting it on social media, but I'll be doing once a month, same time, just the last Saturday of each month. I do take suggestions. It's gonna be through coffee. So if you make a coffee donation using my coffee link, you can suggest what themes. And I also have a few really, really fun costumes ahead. So until then, again, I thank you so much for being here, for supporting me throughout my yoga journey this year. Again, think about how you climb that dumpster fire and what you've gotten done. And again, best wishes as you move forward with your yoga practice. I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.